Hello, and welcome to the Drug Discovery World podcast. My name is Giles, and I'm here to take you through another topical and insightful article from Drug Discovery World. Today's episode is taken from our summer 2017 issue, and is titled The Importance of Heterocyclic Compounds in Anti-Cancer Drug Design. The article was written by Simon Pierce, who is the market segment manager for organic chemicals at Thermo Fisher Scientific. So now on to the main article, the importance of heterocyclic compounds in anti-cancer drug design. Heterocycles are key structural components of many of the anti-cancer drugs available on the market today. Indeed, of the novel molecular anti-cancer agents approved by the FDA between 2010 and 2015, almost two-thirds contained heterocyclic rings within their structures. Their prevalence in anti-cancer drug design can be partly attributed to their being extremely common in nature, with a vast number of cellular processes and mechanisms having evolved the ability to interact with them. Their versatility means there are multiple metabolic pathways and cellular processes within cancer pathology that can be susceptible to heterocycle-based drugs. In this episode, we look at some of the most important heterocyclic compounds currently implicated in cancer therapy, both on the market and in development, discuss the properties that make them valuable as anti-cancer drugs, and consider the benefits of including heterocycles within high-throughput screening libraries. Defined as cyclic compounds containing ring member atoms of carbon and at least one other element, such as nitrogen, oxygen and sulphur, heterocycles are common in biology featuring in a wide range of structures, from enzyme cofactors through to amino acids and proteins. They play a vital role in the metabolism of all living things, and are utilised at almost every stage of the many biochemical processes necessary to sustain life. Their prevalence is partly down to the broad range of interactions these structures are involved with, made possible due to the physico-chemical properties of their heteroatoms that can behave as either acids or bases, depending on the pH of their environment. The ability of heterocycles to engage in a wide variety of intermolecular interactions, including hydrogen bond, donor acceptor capability, pick stacking interactions, metal coordination bonds, as well as van der Waals and hydrophobic forces, allows them to bind with enzymes in a multitude of ways. In addition, their wide range of ring sizes and structural permutations means heterocycles come in a broad range of shapes and sizes, allowing them to match the equally diverse structural range of enzyme-binding pockets. With their functional versatility, extremely common occurrence in nature, and involvement in large numbers of biological pathways, will the increased investment in heterocyclic-based anti-cancer drug design continue to justify their place in the race to combating one of the world's most devastating diseases? The Role of Heterocycles in Anti-Cancer Drug Design It is precisely because heterocycles are so prevalent in nature that they have become so important for anti-cancer drug design. Representing an extremely large cohort of molecules with such an unprecedented level of variability in terms of the interactions they can engage with, heterocycle-based compounds, not surprisingly, have formed the basis of drug therapies time and again. As many enzyme-binding pockets are predisposed to interacting with heterocyclic moieties, heterocycles are a good choice when designing molecules that will interact with targets and disrupt the biological pathways associated with cancer progression. Pathways related to cell growth and development are often targeted by such anti-cancer therapies. Moreover, the relative ease by which heterocyclic rings can be modified with additional substituents allows them to cover a broad area of chemical space further qualifying them as excellent starting points for anti-cancer drug development. As a result of these factors, heterocyclic structures have long played a key role in anti-cancer drug design, featuring prominently in anti-cancer drug compounds currently available on the market. Indeed, 65% of the anti-cancer drugs granted market approval by the FDA between 2010 and 2015 contained a heterocycle and heterocycles form the basis of many of the anti-cancer agents currently in development today. Nitrogen-Based Heterocycles Nitrogen-based heterocycles are of particular importance in anti-cancer drug design, 
featuring in almost three quarters of the heterocyclic anti-cancer agents approved by the FDA between 2010 and 2015. Of all the nitrogen heterocycles, indoles are among the most valuable, with research having demonstrated their ability to induce cell death in a number of cancer cell lines. Over the last few decades, indole and its derivatives have been shown to modulate a number of biological pathways implicated in the progression of cancer. These include the prevention of cell signaling, normal cell cycle progression, tumour vascularization and DNA repair, as well as the ability to induce cellular oxidative stress and cell death. Two of the most important early indole-based anti-cancer agents are vincristine and vinblastine, recognised for their tubulin polymerization inhibition since the early mid-1960s, and both still of clinical importance today. Vincristine is used as a combinatorial treatment for acute limboblastic leukemia and both Hodgkin's and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, whereas vinblastine is typically used in the treatment of advanced Hodgkin's disease and against testicular cancer. The inhibition of tubulin polymerization is the mechanism of action of vinblastine, which leads to cell cycle arrest, halting cancer cell division. Indolacarbazoles are a closely related derivative of indoles, which, much like the wider remit of heterocycles themselves, exhibit a broad range of activities, and have therefore received significant focus in recent years for their anti-cancer potential. Of particular significance is the proficiency of many indolacarbazoles as protein kinase inhibitors, where constitutively active protein kinases are often key factors in the malignant transformation of cells during cancer initiation. One such indolacarbazole, the anti-cancer agent Midostorin, an indolacarbazole-based multi-target protein kinase inhibitor, has been approved by the FDA for the treatment of acute myeloid leukemia as recently as April 2017, which demonstrates just how relevant nitrogen-based heterocycles are for anti-cancer drug design, even to this day. Oxygen-based heterocycles Oxygen-containing heterocycles also feature prominently in many anti-cancer drugs. Among the earliest to be discovered, paclitaxel is a key drug in cancer therapy. Containing an oxetane ring, its mode of action is based on the depolymerization of microtubule polymers, resulting in progression inhibition of mitosis in cancer cells. Similar to the mode of action taken by vinblastine, this results in the retardation of cancer cell division ultimately halting cancer in its tracks. Despite its benefits, however, there are a number of systemic side effects that have been correlated to the drug, including hypersensitivity, hematological issues, and neurotoxicity. As a result, much effort has been devoted to finding alternative therapies that have fewer adverse effects, but still demonstrate the strong therapeutic potential of paclitaxel. More recently developed oxygen-containing heterocyclic anti-cancer drugs include microtubule inhibitors, cabazitaxel and aerobulin, used to treat prostate and metastatic breast cancer, respectively. Cabazitaxel is a tubulin stabiliser, but is thought to be of particular interest for the treatment of multidrug-resistant tumours, owing to its resistance to cellular efflux by the P-glycoprotein efflux pump, expressed by a number of resistance cancer cells. Cabazitaxel is also able to cross the blood-brain barrier, Aerobulin's mechanism of action, on the other hand, is somewhat unique, binding only to the growing ends of microtubules during cell division, where other drugs bind both to the growing and shortening ends, which leads to prolonged mitotic blockage and ultimately cell death via apoptosis. As mentioned, aerobulin is used to treat advanced breast cancer and is not only effective, but exhibits a low level of toxicity compared to alternative cytotoxic agents making it ideal for patients. In addition to this, recent research has led to the repurposing of existing oxygen-based heterocyclic drugs, originally developed for other disease areas, for use as anti-cancer agents. One notable example is orinofin, a gold-containing heterocyclic compound used historically for the treatment of rheumatic arthritis. Numerous studies are being undertaken to assess orinofin as a therapeutic agent for the treatment of many cancer types, including leukemia, lymphoma, and ovarian cancer, 
where it recently received FDA approval to undergo phase 2 clinical trials. Repurposing drugs in this way is a far more affordable approach to drug discovery, owing to the significant costs associated with novel candidate identification and other research and development activities. Sulfur-based heterocycles Sulfur is a key component in several vitamin cofactors, sugars, and nucleic acids, and plays an important role in regulating translation via the sulfuration of transfer RNA. Given the significance of sulfur in biological systems, sulfur-containing heterocycles have received much attention in the development of anti-cancer drugs, much like their oxygen and nitrogen-based counterparts. For instance, in a recent screening study, thiophene derivatives were assessed for their antiproliferative activity against human breast adenocarcinoma cells, with a number of compounds found to show promising inhibitory effects. The researchers reported that their findings could provide a basis by which future tyrosine kinase inhibitors may be designed, with fewer side effects. In addition, thiodiazole and thiazole structures have also shown to be of importance for cancer research in recent years, with a number of thiazole-based nitrogen mustard heterocycles having recently been shown to exhibit strong inhibitory activity towards a panel of human cancer cell lines. Dabrafenib is a thiazole-containing anti-cancer drug molecule that was approved by the FDA in 2013 for use in patients with cancers associated with the mutated version of the BRAF gene. One such group of patients were those suffering from metastatic melanoma, in which almost half of individuals have been shown to possess the mutated version of BRAF. Initial studies had shown that these patients had had vastly improved clinical outcomes and truly encouraging rates of survival as a result of being treated with dabrafenib. It is clear from these advances that heterocycles of many different species continue to form the basis of a multitude of successful anti-cancer treatments. It is no wonder, therefore, that they continue to be a focus within the drug discovery industry, with drug developers understanding that their vast repertoire of molecular interactions make them fantastic anti-cancer drug candidates. Putting heterocycles at the heart of anti-cancer drug discovery Despite the wide range of heterocyclic anti-cancer drugs currently available on the market, challenges around multidrug resistance poor therapeutic efficacy, adverse side effects, and poor bioavailability necessitate the continued development of novel anti-cancer agents. The majority of the drugs available on the market start their drug discovery and development journey as HIT compounds in a high-throughput screening assay. Take Elaparib, for example, a heterocyclic PARP1 inhibitor that was approved by the FDA in late 2014 for the treatment of ovarian cancer. PARP1 is the most abundant member of a family of poly-ADP ribose polymerase, PARP, enzymes, that are implicated in a range of important cellular functions, including DNA repair, cell replication and differentiation, and necrosis. Several forms of cancer are more dependent on PARP compared to regular cells, including those inclusive of the BRCA mutation, which rely on PARP as a critical DNA repair mechanism. This makes PARP enzymes a particularly attractive drug target in cancer research. Many PARP inhibitors mimic the nicotinamide structure of the biological molecule nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, NAD+, which is involved in the normal function of PARP1, in order to interfere with the binding of the substrate to the enzyme's active site. Olaparib operates in this way, and by preventing cancer cells from undertaking PARP-mediated DNA repair, it is able to stop them from dividing as the cell fails to repair fatal DNA damage. A recent phase 3 clinical trial of approximately 300 women with BRCA-related metastatic breast cancer showed that receiving elaparib reduced the chance of progression of advanced cancer by 42%, with progression itself delayed by approximately 3 months. The development of elaparib itself started life from an initial screen of the Maybridge compound collection a library of more than 53,000 hit-like and lead-like compounds. From this screen, the nicotinamide mimic S15065 was identified as having potential activity against PARP1. 
through systematic structure activity studies based on chain elongation and substitution of the phenyl ring. The structure of S15065 was systematically modified and improved in order to maximise the binding ability between the compound and PARP1. This development process was made significantly easier and faster through the identification of a strong candidate HIT with desirable binding properties. Conclusion Due to their prevalence in nature, as well as their structural and chemical diversity, heterocycles play an immensely important role in anti-cancer drug discovery. Their inclusion in approximately two-thirds of the anti-cancer drugs approved by the FDA in the first half of this decade highlights their ongoing importance in cancer research, with research demonstrating time and again the central role they have to play in the fight against cancer. The use of compound screening collections with a strong focus on heterocyclic-based structures can not only lead to the identification of a wide number of potentially successful drug candidates, but can also fast-track the drug development process, ultimately saving time, money, and resources. This article was written by Simon Pierce. Simon Pierce is the Market Segment Manager for Organic Chemicals at Thermo Fisher Scientific overseeing both the organic product portfolios of Acros Organics and Alpha Acer. Simon joined Thermo Fisher as a synthetic chemist in 1984 as part of Maybridge, and has more than 30 years of experience in the chemical industry. If you've enjoyed this episode, then you can subscribe to the journal free of charge by visiting ddw-online.com. You'll also be able to view full articles, including references, and download the original PDFs of past articles, including this one. If you've enjoyed the podcast, then please do leave us a review and subscribe, and you can also follow us on LinkedIn and Twitter. Thanks for listening, and we hope to see you in our next episode. <laughs>